All right. Uh, welcome to another episode of Conversations with Drivers. Um, I'm the host, Lamar Sullivan, and I got another driver here. Um, she's a driver in, based out of the Dallas market, and, and she'll tell you more about that. Uh, so quick introduction is Brianna Brown. How are you doing today? I'm wonderful, Lamar. How are you? I'm doing good. Uh, thank you for, for joining us. We um, we want to hear stories from from all types of drivers and so you were one that was chosen you have a smaller vehicle um so we thought that was interesting um that you're one of our top drivers with the smaller vehicle so just wanted to <laughs> pick your ba brain on um on how you kind of do what you do and what makes sure. you um as motivated as you are so i'll just i'm not gonna go out of order here so <laughs> <laughs> just start thank you <laughs> um so uh name and, and market you're based out of my name is brianna brown and i'm based out of the dallas fort worth area all right and, and so um did you start driving with dispatch to uh to help start your own business or were you already a business owner before dispatch so i would say neither i operate as an independent contractor mm -hmm. I don't have a business established or anything. Okay, so you're um, you do it as kind of uh, you operate in the gig world, but you're not necessarily like don't have an LLC or any anything like that. Correct. Gotcha. Okay. Um, so how did you find out about Dispatch? So I was introduced to Dispatch by a couple that used to work for your company, and they just kind of brought me on and told me about the business. Okay. Um, what uh, what did they tell you um, that that caught your attention? Um, I was working, I think, like Uber Eats, and they were telling me that I would make more money uh, than what I was with Uber Eats just with one order. So hmm. I signed up and got approved and started working. Okay. All right. Uh, and so, how long have you been driving with this bus? Then uh, for four years. Four years. Great. Mm -hmm. And so, when you uh, when you came on was it like immediate like you were seeing the number of orders that you wanted to see or was it kind of a slow burn what was that like um honestly i'm more of like the investigative type person so i went to youtube um to see what dispatch was about and then i looked up the pros and cons of it and looked up the best way to um I guess get the most money possible from dispatch. Mm -hmm. So I learned from other people's mistakes what I needed to do for myself. And then I started seeing the orders I wanted to see. Okay, yeah. That that, <laughs> that's a great way to go. That's that yeah. makes it much easier for you. Learn from what other people have done. Like mm -hmm. that work smarter, not harder. I love exactly. that. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. Good. Um, and so you know, being that this is kind of a delivery space dominated by by men, what is it like to be a, a woman on the road doing these deliveries? Honestly, for me, it's great. Like, <laughs> um, I'm surrounded by a lot of gentlemen, so I very rarely pick up anything heavy. <laughs> <laughs> it works to my benefit. <laughs> That's good. That's good. I'm glad that that works out for you. <laughs> yes, definitely does. Mm. Do you ever have um, issues when, um, say, if there isn't someone available at a pickup or drop off, um, where you might like need that help and and it's not available? Mm -hmm. I think it's probably been one or two occasions. Um, either the person is not on site or they're maintenance for an apartment complex and they can't work um, come out to where I am. I just have to muster up strength and put it out there. I've done it, mm -hmm. but that's not necessarily what I have to deal with 98% of the time. So it's been very rare that I've had to do that. For sure. And and so you have a, a car, right? I do. Okay. And um, so I'd imagine you don't have too many deliveries that are like, are extremely heavy. Is that accurate? No, yesterday I had, I don't know what the item was. It was 150 pounds. Oh, wow. Um, yeah. 
um, I didn't lift it. <laughs> Not at all. I didn't lift it to put it in my car. I didn't lift it out. Um, the people saw, they just told me to put my car up to the, to the dock. The gentleman rolled it out there. He jumped down off the dock and he kind of just tucked it over in my car. And when I got to drop off, two gentlemen picked it up and placed it on the ground where they needed it. But it was hands off for me both times. <laughs> so well, it sounds like our customers are treating you right out there. <laughs> yes, absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> well, I love to hear that. Um, yes. So, so what are some of the challenges of of being a delivery driver in your area? Um, well, this is Texas, so there's constant construction and constant traffic. Mm -hmm. Just two things you can't avoid, so you just have to adapt with it. If I find myself being late, I just um, write in to support and let them know, and then just call my drop off and let them know what's going on. Mm -hmm. Other than that, like I used to panic about it in the beginning. Mm -hmm. um, because of the time frame that you're supposed to be there, but communication just works out on both ends. Yeah, that's great. And that you bring up a great point about communication. You know, that's all that's what we ask for from the drivers. If you in the, the situation that you just outlined, you know, if you're running late for whatever reason, traffic or whatever, just communicate mm -hmm. with us and, you know, we'll, we can let the customer know or you can let the customer know. But most times it's it's usually fine with the customer if they know that you're running traffic and know you know it, an updated eta right exactly yeah um so how have you managed to to stay near the top of the drivers in in terms of orders completed with the car you know this that's um we have car mid-size pickup truck and cargo vans and you know our cargo vans are able to to see the majority of the orders, whereas mm -hmm. the cars really only see car orders. But you're still at the top, regardless of that. So what what's what's the secret? Um, honestly, I didn't know that I was on the top until you made me aware. I think like two other times. Mm -hmm. um, I just challenged myself to see if I can make my rent within a week, mm -hmm. and then I break that down by how many days I'm working. And I make that my goal each day. And if I can't get it that week, I just try again the next week. And that's just my mentality. I don't look at it as I want to be the top driver because I can't see, yeah. you know, my I can't see myself compared to other drivers. I only know what I can do. And I just go from there. For sure. I, I haven't heard the uh, like daily goals like broken down <laughs> in that way. That's very interesting, but yeah. a good way to think about it. Mm -hmm. And so that that keeps you motivated to, you know, just keep accepting orders um, throughout the day, whether you're on track for your goal or not. Right. Absolutely. Cool. Cool. And so, how has uh, dispatch helped you to um, increase your business? I know you were saying that you don't necessarily have a formal business, but you were doing Uber Eats before. So, what? How has it? How has, um, you know, your earnings increased since starting with Dispatch? Um, wow. I don't know how to actually answer that. How the earnings increase, you mean, as far as like daily? It's substantial. It's a substantial increase because Uber Eats, you can probably make about $15 if that's a good one per order. Mm -hmm. So what I'm making with dispatch, I can go to Northern Texas or Southern Texas. I've gone as far as Shreveport and that's how I've been able to um, obtain the goal, maintain the goals that I have for myself. But mm -hmm. I've never done other industrial um, contracting gigs like this one. Mm -hmm. So for me, I have nothing else to compare it to for except sure. for the food apps. Sorry, I don't know if that kind of helps or not. No, that, that does answer the question. Um, okay. Yeah, because I, yeah, I guess what I'm getting at is, you know, you were doing this other gig work and mm -hmm. you, uh, dispatch it just pays a little bit more. And so- Oh, it definitely does. Okay, so that yeah. so that has helped to, I, I'm, I'm trying to get sustain. around- It helps to sustain my life. <laughs> yes. yes, yes. <laughs> Good, good. 
Um, so what have you liked about working with Dispatch? Um, that I can make my own schedule I'm available to my daughter. You know, when kids get sick or you need to go pick them up from school or want to drop them off to school, I'm able to start and stop um, at my leisure, mm -hmm. I guess, um, when it's convenient for me. And she even can ride with me at times. Mm -hmm. So if I picked up an order and I just picked her up from school, I'm like, hey, we got to get on the road and she'll just ride along. So it really, it's really, really helpful. Good, good. Um, so you like that flexibility of mm -hmm. setting your schedule. Uh, anything yeah. else that um, that you want to point out? Um, I think that's the biggest thing. Mm -hmm. I, I'm not sure. <laughs> Because I just forgot, just that quick, I forgot the question you asked me. Sorry. Oh, well, what have you, what have you uh, liked about working with this badge? Oh, okay. So mm -hmm. the increase of money, the flexibility of my schedule, mm -hmm. um, meeting the different workers and contractors, mm -hmm. um, becoming familiar with the different places I'm going to. And I think that also ties back into how I've gotten to where I am. I know exactly where the places are and who exactly is um, my contact. And most of those people know me. So I can call them probably five minutes before like, hey, I'm coming down the street. What side should I meet you on? And it just makes it easier for me. I just like, not necessarily the solitude, but I'm like really in my own little world and I'm still making money and I'm happy, mm -hmm. you know? <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, that I mean, that's a, that's something that a lot of the gig drivers like is, you know, you're kind of in your own world, just mm -hmm. kind of jamming, jamming your yes. music, or listening to podcasts or whatever the case exactly. is. Exactly. Yeah. Yes. Um, so what are what are some of the things, in your opinion, that you mm -hmm. think Dispatch can improve on? OK, I think um, I might have spoken to you about it in the webinar before. And hopefully, if I say it this way, you can probably rein it in for me. I tried to remember the way you said it before. So mm -hmm. I would suggest shorter window times for the orders to be placed from the, um, I guess, from the, who are they considered? The person who places the order. Who are they? Mm -hmm. What are they considered? The, those are considered our customers, and the people that uh, get it dropped off to, or that are you're dropping off to, are considered our end recipients. Okay, so if there was a shorter window instead of it being a two-hour window, so let's mm -hmm. say if I picked up an order, they have me waking and needing to be at a pickup between four and five, but the drop-off or the contractors aren't on site until seven or eight. Now, mm -hmm. if this is a dedicated item. That means if you drop it, it lowers your ratings. If you keep it, it keeps you with that item hostage for about two to three hours. Mm -hmm. But then if it's not dedicated and you decide to pick up another order, now you're in limbo between, am I going to make both of these um, orders on time just because that two hour window. Now, if it was shortened to one hour window, say if it was, needed to be dropped off at seven and I picked it up at six, then I will be at the location area just a few minutes earlier than what was instead of hours earlier. And so I think that will lessen the need to compensate for um, wait times. Mm -hmm. It will lessen the need for um, drivers to be forced to hold on to items. And then it'll free up our time to be able to have multiple items um, delivered on time for multiple stops, if that makes sense. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. Okay. That's good feedback. Okay. Um, anything else that um no, that is the biggest thing for me. Well, you said what would make it easier. So the yeah. second thing would be maybe the people who put in the orders are understanding what numbers that we need, because some people put in the pickup orders number for the contact for drop-off and then Say for instance, gray bar, if their number, if their phone doesn't roll over into eight, but you put gray bar as the pickup number, I have no one to contact. So then that means I have to call support, see if they have someone, you know, it's just this yeah. kind of thing of 
waiting when if the correct number was there with the correct person who works for the company because sometimes they keep numbers of people who don't even work for this company anymore so if they would just update the correct number in that slot it would just make our lives easier so just those two things are the major things i think if that was fixed that would be awesome okay so so increased um customer education on how yes. to fill out their, their forms <laughs> yes Okay. Because sometimes those numbers even go back to their corporate office, yeah. and then that person doesn't even know who's at the job site. So then now, once again, we're calling support, and support is trying to do it in the back end, trying to find out who the person is. Most times, if I notice that, um, once again, using Graybar, for example, because I go there so much, mm -hmm. but if I see that, um, I'll ask my contact at Graybar, hey, do you have a separate number before I leave, you know? Mm -hmm. if the number is incorrect and usually oh. they they have emails that shows the correct number okay okay so you have your own workarounds for when you encounter that yes at that yeah. one company other than that <laughs> i talk to you all. <laughs> for, sure, for sure um so um you've kind of touched on this but i'll like, mm -hmm. just ask again uh so what are some things what are, are the things that are most important to you as a gig driver? So once again, the flexibility. So we were saying that my schedule um, being available to my daughter, which as I said before, and um, working toward my financial goals. So I think it just encompasses all the things that we spoke about earlier. Mm -hmm. Okay, yeah. Yeah, and you know, I think majority of our gig drivers would have very similar answers to that is yeah. that, that flexibility and the money are the most important mm -hmm. and so um with the other um gig apps that you've used how have the orders on the dispatch app compared to those in terms of like pay or distance or how they kind of how they pay, um, anything that you want to say in regards to that? I think because I only can compare it to um, Uber Eats, I think it was there were times that you could get same day pay, but I know you guys have um, spoken on that and you're looking into that to see mm -hmm. if it works well with this company. Mm -hmm. um, but as far as how I personally feel, it's more peaceful <laughs> working for dispatch, you know, the pay and the people that you can talk to, it's it's more peaceful. And I, what I did notice with the food apps is, for instance, if someone got some food, received mm -hmm. food, and they mm -hmm. would lie and say, hey, didn't receive it, mm -hmm. you know, they would side on the part of the, the customer. Whereas with dispatch, if I let you all know I'm having a problem or someone was rude to me or whatever the case may be, you guys back us, which is something I truly appreciate. Good. I'm glad that you've had that experience um, mm -hmm. because that's what we that's what we want to do. If, as, if you're providing us with the whole story and we see it, like you've been treated unfairly, we we are going to side with you. Like we don't want to. You know alienate our our drivers mm -hmm. um just to keep business you know we want we want our drivers to be treated fairly when our customers are to be treated fairly and so we just we want to keep that uphold it on, on both sides right. um all right uh so when looking for orders what are the most important factors that makes that makes an order worth it to you so for me, it's the vicinity. So how close it is to my home, mm. um, the pay, mm. the time of day, which means don't have to deal with traffic, lunch traffic, work after work traffic, um, How quick, and then also how quick I can get back home to reset and get ready for another order. So those are the things I look for. Okay, so is it is it common for you to to go home between orders? Absolutely. Like, for instance, when I was speaking about the between 4 and 5 a.m., um, the company I uh, spoke on before, well, three of the companies that you all use are only in a 10 mile radius of me. But since this um, gray bar opens so early, most times if I have to hold on to an item, 
I just come back home. I'll let you guys know, like, hey, I'm going back home. They don't open until 730. I'll leave back out at 7. So, yeah, it works out for me to just come back home and relax until it's time to leave back out. Good. Good. I'm glad that, that works out for you. Um, so, being seen that now that you know that you're one of our, you know, top drivers and the the whole network, what is what does that mean to you to hear that? Honestly, I'm truly humble because I didn't expect that there are so many drivers um, in the DFW area. So to know that I'm on top was surprising, but mm -hmm. I thank you for the recognition. For sure, for sure. Yeah, we yeah, we we definitely want our want the drivers that are doing the, the big volume, you know, high quality, high quantity. And you're one of those drivers. And so we really appreciate that work. And and that's including the customer service aspect as well, which um, I know that you've uh, you're good in that regard as well. Thank you. Yeah. Um, so what value have the, the webinars had to you? So I believe they keep us abreast as to what's going on that other drivers may not know about, what other people may be facing out there, um, upcoming changes that you guys are um, about to implement, and then it gives us the chance to be heard. So through the things that we've spoken about in the webinar, I have seen improvements through, for our concerns. I think you all address them very well, um, and I thank you for that as well. Good, good. And, and so I guess it's kind of a offshoot of that question like do you feel like um do you feel like it's helpful to hear like the, the rest of the the driver's questions um outside of your own and and kind of the format of the webinars do you like the format or, or what do you think I think it's good to hear what other people have to say it lets you know like although you're driving alone you're not the only person yeah. Um, facing that same concern. Um, I guess not to be mean, some people, once they get to speak, they take up a lot of time that could be used for someone else to try to speak, or they come in late and they don't realize uh, Jimmy, right? Yeah. Jimmy has already covered um, that question. Mm -hmm. But I mean, he's he's respectful enough that he's going to answer it again or you or is her name maria the one that types in the messages yeah, yeah, yeah. the two of you try to tackle it from in there but i think it's it's good and then it also makes me realize i guess i'm not doing as bad as i thought because i hear some people who don't even get orders at all or they struggle mm -hmm. with orders and i'm like let me be quiet. <laughs> Not doing as bad as what I thought it was. So. <laughs> yeah, well, I would definitely say you're in one of our busier markets. So yeah. that, that definitely works out in your favor. It does. It definitely does. Um, so why, uh, and from your perspective, why should mm -hmm. other people drive with dispatch? Uh, to reiterate what I said before, I think dispatch truly looks out for their drivers. Mm -hmm. um, the support team and the driver care team are available mm -hmm. um, either through the app or emails. Um, I think, and that's for any problem that we may face. Um, I believe the compensation for orders are fair. And I truly appreciate the frequent trips to um, the local businesses because it makes, it gain, helps you to gain rapport with the workers and the contractors. Okay, cool. Um, and, and so if you could give any advice to other drivers at mm -hmm. this point, what would it be? So I would say, if you already have an order and then there's an order suggested to you when you're on the way to drop off, if you choose to pick it up, make sure you refresh that screen to see if you have to pick up that second order before dropping off the first order mm. because and make sure it's on the way to the drop off of the first order, I would say, because Texas is huge mm -hmm. and highways are unforgiving. So you'll probably end up going like two miles before you can turn back around. So it's no need for unnecessary driving. Just make sure you refresh that screen if you pick up a second order. 
That's a good call out. Good call out for sure. Yeah. My, uh, <laughs> I'm, I'm a little bit familiar with, with Texas. My sister lives in Houston. Yeah. And I always joke about everything is just so far in Texas. You go down yeah. the block, it's two miles. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. And then the people don't want to let you in or, you know, you see your exit or the GPS tells you at the last minute it's your exit. And it's, yeah. It's a headache at yeah. times. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, oh yeah, I can that imagine. <laughs> so, last question here. Just um, not even really a question, but anything else you would like um, to share about your experience or um, advice that you want to give to drivers, future or current, or or anything like that. Um. Advice that I would like to give. I just say have fun with it. If you ever run into any problems, just make sure you reach out to support. It might take a few minutes here and there because I don't think there's there's more of us out here on the road than there are <laughs> behind the scenes, correct? Yes. So um, I would just say just just give it a chance or. Uh, Um, just have fun with it. That's all I can say. It's just have fun. It's not as hard as it may seem. Mm -hmm. um, I don't think the tasks as, are as daunting as they may appear to be either. It's actually mm -hmm. pretty simple. I think that's probably what's so amazing about it. It's really simple. You just go in and drop it off and keep on going about your life. So <laughs> It makes it easy for me, but I just my last words or anything, I would say I've truly enjoyed my experience with dispatch and I'm thankful and grateful that you guys, well, I'm thankful and grateful for all of you that work behind the scenes to make my life easier because with you back there, I only have to worry about what's right in front of me and then I can relate to you what I need and then you can help assist me further. That's well, thank you very much. Like, that's that's what that's our goal is to make make your job easier. Um, so that's why we do these webinars and and why I have these interviews with different drivers to just hear what you guys are seeing, what you feel like needs to improve, and how we can make your life easier. So uh, I'm glad that you're experiencing that and. Um, we appreciate having you in our Dallas market as one of our yeah. top drivers. And I just want to say, keep up the great work. Um, yeah, you you are a valuable valuable part of the of that market. And um, yeah, we're Thank lucky. You. To have you. Thank you so much. Yeah, no problem. Well, um, that'll conclude uh, this uh, this conversation for today. But um, yeah, if you have anything else you'd like to chat about. Just let me know.